इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड ड्यू टू ड्यू टू इंफनाइट इंफनाइट नॉन कंडक्टिंग नॉन कंडक्टिंग नॉन कंडक्टिंग सिलेंडर नॉन कंडक्टिंग सिलेंडर नाउ यू सी हेयर suppose this is my cylinder of radius r capital r right this is my cylinder of radius capital this is infinitely long so this is my uh, cylinder infinitely long cylinder now this is the axis of the cylinder this is a non conducting cylinder mark note it it is non conducting very important word non conducting now you want to find see you, you will be able to find the electric field at this point r outside on and then inside somewhere this is the idea i have to find the electric field outside uh, outside on the cylinder on the axis of the on the on the boundary of the cylinder and on this uh, on inside the cylinder that's the point now let us write down consider consider uh, uh, the, uh, consider the cylinder of radius r consider the infinite cylinder let us say infinite Uh, no, of, of course, it is non-conducting. I am talking about non-conducting. Still, I write non-conducting, infinite non-conducting. Sorry, non-conducting, conducting, non-conducting cylinder, non-conducting cylinder, cylinder of uh, non-conducting cylinder of radius r, radius capital R. See, it's radius, radius capital R. This capital R. Now, the electric field. See, let us mark the points. E, P e point. Let us call this Q point. E Q. Not let us say S point. S point. We can uh, we can um, put the point uh, name of the points the way you feel like you don't want to put the names of the points. No problem. Now consider. Now, now for R greater than R, that is this point. that is at point p at point p consider a gaussian cylinder consider a gaussian cylinder a gaussian cylinder gaussian cylinder of radius radius uh radius r passing through the point p passing through the point uh, radius r passing through the point p r uh, radius r and length l let me uh, add that portion here that is radius r radius radius r radius r wait a minute uh, radius r radius r and length and length l And length L. Let us consider this. Passing through this. This is the Gaussian cylinder I'm talking about. I'm drawing the cylinder something like this, and it is passing through this point. Let me do it in a different color. This is my Gaussian cylinder. Got it? Passing through this point P. This is of some length. This is my Gaussian cylinder. This blue color is my Gaussian cylinder. Passing through the point P. Now. See here, what you will see again, the electric the electric field is the electric field E is equal to E R cap. I will use cylinder for coordinates because this is cylinder. So see, uh, the electric field is directed in this sense, directed in this sense. Now there is a surface here D S one, there is a surface here D S two. Similarly, the way I did in the earlier uh, earlier video, this is D S two. And this is the surface which is downward is DS three. Now consider the surfaces. Let us write down. Consider, consider uh, the surface surfaces surfaces DS one uh, on the curved surface of the cylinder on curved surface of cylinder of cylinder that is DS one. Is equal to DS one R cap. Similarly, the the surface we are always pointing outward. Surface 
on the top of the cylinder top of cylinder cylinder you can write it in short no problem ds2 is equal to ds2 k cap now uh, the surface at the bottom at bottom bottom of cylinder cylinder and these are all gaussian cylinders basically ds3 is equal to minus ds3 k cap now in in cylindrical coordinate in cylindrical coordinate coordinate i'm writing it again coordinate you can also write it in the exam r theta and z the unit vectors are unit or the unit unit vectors are unit vectors are r cap theta cap and z cap uh, sorry k cap not z cap k cap it's k cap respectively respectively and are perpendicular to each other and are perpendicular perpendicular to each other to each other now as i told you in my earlier video see here see here this is my cylindrical axis this is the z axis and in this direction is the k vector the the radius vector is always in this sense and tangent to this curve is the theta vector these two are always at 90 and this is also at 90 the all the three are always at 90 you can draw this you can write this line so now due to gauss law due to gauss law gauss law gauss law flux electric flux phi e is the total integral the total integral of all the surfaces is equal to charge enclosed upon epsilon naught now in this e dot ds it is e vector dot ds1 vector plus e vector dot ds2 vector plus ds2 vector plus e vector dot ds3 vector is equal to charge enclosed by the gaussian cylinder now you see now you see e is nothing but e e vector is nothing but dot ds1 r cap because they are in the same direction now in class 11 and 12 you always always told you you always told that the surface perpendicular to the curve surface is in, in the direction of the electric field that uh, the uh, surface or the top of the cylinder is uh, sorry the surface which is uh, uh, perpendicular to the curved surface in the is in the direction of the electric field and the surface which is uh, on the top is perpendicular to the electric field the contribution is zero and the surface which is at the bottom of the cylinder is also perpendicular to the electric field the contribution is zero i am repeating once more see the electric field and the curve, the surface which is perpendicular to the curved surface now see this is my curved surface and the, uh, so this is that surface this is the surface which is perpendicular to the surface this is ds1 and the electric field is also in this direction so the contribution comes only from this the contribution from this is zero the contribution from this is zero and in class in 12th class you used to say the contribution only comes from the curved surface and the contribution from the top and the bottom surface are always zero instead of saying this you can do it vectorally so now it is e r cap dot ds k ds2 k cap plus e r cap dot minus ds3 k cap ds3 k cap is equal to q enclosed q upon epsilon naught and what is this q now you already know that r dot uh, r dot is 1 and r dot dot k dot is k cap is 0 r, r cap dot r cap is 1 and r, cot, r cap dot k cap is 0 so what you get is e ds1 is equal to q epsilon naught now you see one thing e is uniform throughout e is uniform in that particular radius suppose this is this is the this is the point i want to find the particular radius that is from here everywhere the uh, e is uniform so e is uniform and q is the charged enclosed charged enclosed enclosed by the by the spherical uh, by, uh, by the gaussian cylinder by the gaussian cylinder gaussian cylinder this is very important point 
Now Q is 3. In this case, this is a non-conducting cylinder. Keep one thing in mind. This is a non-conducting cylinder. The charge is uh, uniformly distribu distributed throughout the whole volume. Let me write it down. As this is for, no, note for you, as the cylinder, as the cylinder, cylinder is non-conducting, is non-conducting. Con, uh, sorry, conducting, non-conducting, non-conducting. The charge is uniformly distributed throughout the whole sphere. The charge is uniformly uniformly distributed distri distributed sorry distributed distributed throughout the whole throughout the throughout the whole given cylinder throughout the throughout throughout the whole cylinder whole cylinder Remember this thing. This is very, very important point to remember because it is non-conducting. So, Q is equal to, Q is equal to charge per unit volume. This is the charge, charge, uh, charge per, uh, sorry, Q, Q is equal to, wait, rho, rho into V, where rho is charge per unit volume, charge, charge, rho is charge per unit unit volume now how to find this row how to find this row now you see one thing row is nothing but q y v and what is the volume of a cylinder what is the volume of a cylinder pi r square l what is the volume of the cylinder pi r square l q pi r square l you already know from class uh, 8 and 9 institution chapter uh, volume cylinder surface q and all that stuff so you know this already now you have this E comes out of the integral and the curved surface of the cylinder is 2 pi R L and this is the charge and the total total charges now you see one thing total charges mm, your Q is basically sorry huh, so charge per uh, yes exactly uh, you have this as uh, your uh, see, this is Q is the total charge in the whole volume pi R square L. This is Q. Q is sorry, not this, but it is uh, okay. Just a minute. I made a slight mistake here. This has to be. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This has to be. This has to be pi R square L, capital R square L. The uh, uh, that that complete thing. So Q is from here. I'll get Q as rho the charge per unit volume rho pi r square l upon epsilon naught. Now from here you can see anything. Pi pi l l cancels out. Your E is nothing but rho r square upon two epsilon naught r. This what exactly it is. This what exactly it is. Now. See, here you can see E is inversely proportional to 1 upon R square. Again, this uh, graph is of E by R, E versus R is something like this. Again, now at the surface of the cylinder, you don't need to do anything. At surface of the actual cylinder the given to you, the cylinder, at the surface of the cylinder, R is equal to R. Very simple, R is equal to R. Now, if you put R equal to R in this expression, E comes out to be rho R square upon 2 epsilon naught uh, R. So this R cancels out with this. This gives you the electric field is rho R by 2 epsilon naught, which is a constant, is a constant, let me write in bracket, is a constant, constant on the boundary of the cylinder. Now, let us go inside the uh, cylinder. That means, I was talking about the cylinder, I hope you remember the picture ahead. Uh, uh, this was my R. I am now talking about a point S somewhere here at a distance small r, say. Now, for this is for R less than R. R less than R, that is inside the surface. I am talking about inside the surface. This is at the surface, this is this is inside inside the cylinder rather. 
inside the cylinder. This is the topic now. Similarly, consider, now again you write down the thing, consider a, a, a Gaussian cylinder, Gaussian cylinder, now, again the same thing, cylinder of this, just a minute, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, yes, cylinder, uh, say, Gaussian cylinder of radius, radius R and length L, length L, sorry, length L passing through the point S, passing through a S, passing through S. Now you see one thing. Now here is our Gaussian cylinder. This is our Gaussian cylinder of length. This is our length L. Again the same with everything same. Whatever I told you, you consider a surface BS1 here, BS2 here and BS3 here. The electric field is always directed in this sense. So, uh, again the same thing. Now, what would you write here? The same language would be same. Uh, see, here the language would remain the same. So, consider the electric field as I told you. Here, again you write down the same thing. Like I told you, E you write as E R cap. No problem. Then the uh, surface, uh, the surface at the surface, at the curved surface curved surface curved surface is again this is ds1 vector is ds1 r cap and uh, 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 at the surface at the top surface surface at the top at top of uh, top is ds2 equal to ds2 k cap and surface surface at bottom bottom is ds3 and this is nothing but ds3 k cap now see one thing here again by gauss's law by gauss's law gauss's law law you have phi electric flux is equal to closed surface e dot ds complete closed surface e dot ds is equal to q enclosed upon right now this is no enclosed charge upon a silent knot. Now what is the enclosed charge seen in the figure here? See in this figure. I am only talking about this much portion, nothing else. I am only talking about this much portion, not the whole surface now. Now here, see, Q is the charge, Q is the charge, Q is the charge enclosed by the Gaussian cylinder, by Gaussian cylinder, Gaussian cylinder, uh, cylinder, wait a minute, cylinder, and that is Q is equal to rho V, and from here rho is Q by V. Now here this uh, V is very simple, it is nothing but Q upon pi R square L, you now take the volume of this cylinder, listen, now you will take the volume of this much cylinder only, volume of this much cylinder only this inside cylinder pi r square over this much inside cylinder we'll take this cylinder now only this small little cylinder now because we are inside the surface inside the surface now here so now your your uh, this contribution is e vector dot ds1 vector plus e vector dot ds2 vector plus e vector dot ds3 vector is equal to your Q upon epsilon naught. Now just get the Q from here. See, it is E R cap dot D S1 R cap. Now in class 11th and 12th, you used to say the only contribution comes from the curved surface. The contribution that comes from the topmost is zero because it is perpendicular to the electric field. The contribution from the downward surface is also zero because it is perpendicular to the electric field. Instead of that, let's write in vector form. Dot D S2 K cap plus E R cap dot D S three K cap minus K cap. Sorry, wait a minute. Just a minute. This is minus D S three K cap, and this is nothing but now pi. Again, rho is the charge per unit volume. Let me I'll write it somewhere else. This is equal to rho charge into rho pi R square L upon epsilon naught, where rho is charge per unit volume. 
the same unit volume but right now this row is different from the other row which I did because it was in the earlier part it was the whole volume in the earlier section see here see here here what I did here look here what I did was the row is the full a row is charged for the whole volume the whole volume but here the row is only charged for this this little volume only this little volume so this is the difference this is that difference this is that difference so here now let's rub this all now you have from here and you know that r dot r dot r k r cap vector dot r cap vector is nothing but one and r cap dot k cap is zero because they're in cylindrical coordinates i've already mentioned you mentioned that as as in cylindrical coordinate cylindrical cylindrical coordinates 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 r theta z z the unit vectors unit vectors vectors are r cap theta cap k cap respectively respectively and r and r perpendicular per uh, perpendicular 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 to each other to each other so that's why this result comes on in dot product now from here you have only you are left with see you are only left with here you are only left this is zero this point becomes zero you are left with eds is equal to rho from here rho pi r square l upon epsilon naught now see the picture here see the picture here now e is uniform e is uniform e is uniform it comes out of the integral ds is equal to rho pi r square l upon epsilon naught now see one thing here now the curved surface of the inner cylinder, the curved surface of this cylinder, this, this, I'm talking about this cylinder, curved surface area of this cylinder, curved surface area, 2 pi, uh, that is 2 pi r over. This is 2 pi r over. This is 2 pi r l, which is and pi r square l upon epsilon naught. This l, this l goes off, this r, this r goes off. So e comes out to be, this pi and pi goes off, rho r by 2 epsilon naught here. Remember here, E is directly proportional to R. So the graph for this is e, R, e versus R graph is nothing but a straight line like this inside. So combining all the three results inside, at the surface and outside. See, if I draw the graph, see, inside it is what? Right now we saw, for your explanation, E is directly proportional to R. Uh, on the surface, on surface, E is constant. E is constant. And on the surface and outside the surface, outside, outside again it is E is inversely proportional to R. So combining all the three results, if you draw the graph of E versus, uh, let me take more space, yes, E versus your R, this R, R. So here is the point where R equal to R and here it is constant. Let me... Uh, draw the con uh, write down the constant for you the constant value is here this is that constant it will come to this value this constant is here it is uh, i'll show you the constant where it is at the surface see here see here at the surface see this is that at the surface you can see all this line till here see all this this is the constant uh rho r by 2 epsilon naught this is that value you need this is that value you need this is rho r by 2 epsilon naught here it is that constant value, E constant is, this is rho r by 2 epsilon naught, this is that value, this value is this value. Till here, inside, when it is r is less than r, this is the portion r less than r, this is the portion r greater than r, r greater than r. In this portion, it, uh, see, it rises linearly, it will go, oh sorry, it will be straight line, wait a minute, let me draw it properly, it will be straight, it will rise up, it will rise till here, then it will stop. And at r greater than r, it will start decreasing. This is the this is the combined graph of all the three things. It's the combined graph all the of all the three things. I hope now this is see in this much portion 
in this much portion, in this much portion it is rising and it will rise till this value, till this value, it will rise till this value. So if I uh, mark this again and outside it is going to decrease. This is the combined uh, uh, graph of E versus R for all the three situations.